Good afternoon Floss Tube. this is Gem Stitch here for um, a different sort of uh, video that I'm bringing to you today. Um, this is going to be a video, not only is it a different angle, so that will be a good test for me to find if this sort of thing works for future reference, but also um, I'm going to be sharing some of my stash with you. Basically this uh, idea come from a, a commenter. Um, back in the December, November video where I said actually funny enough some of the starts that I had planned for 2018 would be quite shabby chic heavy sometimes that's just the way it works and um, a lot of those uh, patterns and ideas come from um, Europe like just so just so happens that a lot of them are continental so I thought it would be a good idea to maybe um, show you some designers um, that you may not have come across before. You probably have, but some designers that you may not have come across before. And if you like that sort of thing, and you know, um, you can try and find... I'll try and give you as much information as to where they are and where you can find them um, as much as possible. So I'm going to show you everything that I have in my stash in regards to what I call the continental patterns. Some of these patterns um, are um, in Italian or French. Some have already been converted, in, converted into English. Some have um, at least four different languages. So I will go through them and um, show you some of the, some of the things I've got. So in a way it's sort of a stash video, not a haul, I didn't just go out and buy all of these at once, it's more of a stash video, these are part of the collection um, that I feel is very continental, so hopefully you will enjoy. So the first pattern, also <laughs> for, you, for those of you that know me quite well, um, I'm sorry if I butcher any of uh the names of designers and patterns in some of these uh, my uh, language skills and linguistics aren't quite up to scratch but uh, thank you very much anyway so there's a dis little disclaimer there so the first pattern I'm going to show you getting straight into it is a creation de Crestel pattern this is one I have stitched already uh, uh, my little bobbins um, and I actually stitched this, I believe, about two years ago, 2015 maybe, or 2016. So I will also insert a picture um, somewhere along in this segment to show you what I did with the finished design. So this is actually all um, in French. And But it's, you know, if you can cross-stitch, don't be put off by that. If you can cross-stitch then you can read a pattern. Um, it doesn't matter what language it's written in, really. So, for me, it, that doesn't necessarily put me off at all um, of buying patterns that aren't necessarily written in English. So, I did make some changes to this pattern, which you'll see when I show you uh, my finished piece. I actually changed uh, the fabric um, choice, I changed the alphabet and I added some embellishments and beads and things just because I wanted it to reflect my stitching journey up until this point, that point in stitching. So I used a hand dyed fabric, I put embellishments on there, so just to represent me but it's a really really cute piece and as you can see this picture is very pixelated so this doesn't actually do it justice when it's finished and I do quite like a lot of the creation de Crestel. Um, I picked this up from um, Casa Sanina, which is a shop in Italy, a stitching supply shop. And that tends to be where I get a lot of my supplies from, although I have noticed that there are um, a lot of um, UK suppliers and certainly um, American suppliers that tend to be buying some continental patterns, as well as um, some of these shops can be found on Etsy. As regards to Creation de Crestel, I've only seen these on Casa Sanina, but I haven't gone out and done a massive search. So, but you could get, I know you can get some of these from Casa Sanina, if not this pattern, then certainly other designs that they do, and they're all very, very, very pretty. So this would be uh, my first one. So I've actually stitched that and completed that. 
hopefully there shouldn't be much glare on these too much so my next one is um, a designer that has become um, I would say much more popular um, I did actually originally come across this designer on 123 stitch this is going back about four or five years ago I did actually come across this designer and it's a Sticky Dean von der Weinberg I believe and um, I stitched I haven't stitched this one this is one of I've got two of their patterns so this is the flower square Phoebe um, and I thought that this would be a good choice because it's just that sort of design where you could pick a lovely variegated thread and just run with it so this is a nice staple but the other one that I've stitched of theirs is the Dragon's Quaker um, I've shown that before in my videos it was um, one of the first things I'd ever stitched on even weave and um, I absolutely love it and that's on display in my dining room currently at the moment but I will insert a picture of the finished um, product in here but yeah so uh, stick it in von der Weinberg if that's how you say it um, I would definitely recommend McKenna um, Stitching Lion and um, I know there's been lots of other people that have stitched these um, lovely Quaker style designs that they, that they do as well so they're definitely a designer worth checking out if you don't know of them already so yeah that's the Dragon Quaker and Phoebe The next one is a Passion Bonheur. This is actually um, all in French. But again, it's not difficult to read. You would be able to follow this quite happily. So this is obviously the tea rooms. Uh, Salon de thé. And then <laughs> you can actually see sometimes, I, I don't need to do this as much. I don't believe showing you this would be a problem. But I've actually written in pencil. I don't know if you can see. I did a rough translation and written in pencil just so that I can use it as a quick reference point. But the more practice that you have with these, the less you need to do that. You can You can kind of figure it out yourself at the end of the day. If it's got the stitch count and those sort of things and it's good and a lot of them use DMC where's there's no complication there at all so don't be put off that it's not necessarily in English so that's the tea rooms and another one of theirs is the hotel room So lovely continental breakfast there with the croissant and the coffee. So yeah. The next one, which is a different designer but a very similar style, is uh, Madame Le Fay. So these are also all written in French. And these are absolutely beautiful designs. So this is the roses. This one I actually do intend maybe <laughs> to start this year. And my intention with that is to stitch it and turn it into a cushion. Like a big cushion, a seat cushion. But they're absolutely beautiful. So that's the Madame Leffe. And I've got a sea themed one, Sailor. I just think because of their square size, they make such a great idea for it. They could, of course, use them as a picture and frame them. They'd look equally beautiful, but I think as a cushion, they'd look, they'd look lovely as a shabby chic cushion too. So, and these all use DMC. So, really easy to kit up. 
and the lavender one here. Beautiful. So certainly it's not that um, continental designers only do shabby chic. Um, that's not the case at all. Obviously that's just my taste and what I tend to be drawn to. But don't necessarily think that that's just all that they do. Because they don't. They've got, you've got some wonderful designers out there. So. Le Broderie de Parisienne. This. These design. This particular designer is absolutely stunning. Um, this one itself is actually called um, Audrey, the ABC Audrey, a part of the vintage collection. And I have stitched a section from this. These ABCs are just ideal. You could stitch them all in one go. I have shown this before, but you could stitch this all in one go. But what's also great about this is that you can actually put a name you could put um like you know gems craft room and and plot it out and then you could um you could mix and match and that is exactly what i did i stitched um a pair of scissors from here and let me see if i can oh yeah there's a motif of a pair of scissors here and I actually used that motif in one of the letterings for um, the Milton Keynes stitching retreat that I did last year, um, which was a G, and I added that motif with the flower and the scissors. These are so versatile. So to me, yes, they are expensive, but the versatility that you get from them, technically you could have like an endless amount of designs from these. So they're worth it to me it's not like you stitch it once and then and then that's it it's you know these are endless opportunities so for me i'm quite happy to pay that there's a lot of work that goes into these and they are beautiful but see, it's got some beautiful things pin cushions you could just stitch like the thimble um just the buttons really lovely so it's the versatility that interested me on this one so that's one of theirs. I'm just trying to try and hopefully you didn't see the pattern there. And then this one um, you've probably seen before. So this is the ABC Patissier. Uh, this one I called the Bethany Sampler. I actually did a birth sampler for my husband's um, cousin's baby. And so therefore I called it the Bethany Sampler where I plotted it out and did... Um, and spelt out her name Bethany. Um, I will insert a picture here. Although I don't know how it happened, but I actually <clears throat> didn't manage to take a picture of the whole finished article. I'm going to get her to send me a picture, but I don't think that's going to be before I load up this video. So I'll insert a picture of the best pictures maybe that I can find of it if I can. I don't think it will be the whole piece. It may be sort of as I'm working through as a work in progress. But this was this is absolutely beautiful. And I did this um, not f not last, not Christmas gone, Christmas before, I believe. So I did this in 2016 um, and just did a letter, tried to do a letter a month. Um, ready for Christmas as a, to, to wrap up and give us a Christmas present but again this pattern I will use again I mean even down to you could just spell out cake you could just do an initial and put it on a little bag um, so many beautiful opportunities with these alphabets so really lovely they, they do a floral alphabet they do a Russian alphabet um, and sort of uh, like a, a very a continental um French style is it tour de jour or tour de jolie or that you can buy it in bedding on wallpaper and they're beautiful and eventually I will get them because you never know when this sort of thing comes in handy so you know this is lovely this is the I really like this designer but this is the only one I actually have of theirs at the moment um, although I do have some on my wish list so this is Renato Paralin um, this is called Easter, and it's a tree. They they do a Halloween tree, they do a Christmas tree. I really like this Easter tree, um, and I really like this design. I will probably make changes to it in the sense of the colour scheme. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. 
I will probably make changes to it in sense of the colour scheme. Um, I actually really love this colour scheme, but I think probably for a springy type, I may change it for an Easter pattern, make it a bit more springy and uh, more pastel-y in certain areas. But what a beautiful design. And again, I believe, let me just check. Yeah, it's all charted in DMC. It doesn't have the amount of thread um, that you would need on there. It just has the colours. But um, I think depending on what count you was going to stitch it on, and you'd probably be okay with um, one skein. But if you think that maybe for the tree trunk, I'd possibly buy two because it's a quite a big amount of uh, coverage there on the tree trunk. But obviously, it's, uh, when I get round to starting this piece and working on it, then I do always add in the comments what I've used and how much if I've needed to have, use more than one skein of something. So that's Renato Paralin. They do some beautiful stuff as well. Okay, the next one is... Now, <laughs> I would pronounce that Nimue. Um, that is um it does make reference on the back that it was Merlin's love interest and therefore um, I would pronounce that Nimue um I I don't know if the French pronounce that the same but it's a name obviously um but yeah so um this is by the um I know a lot of people have seen this designer before um so but I thought she was really pretty So much detail and so beautiful. I'm not sure. I think, is that, for those of you that know, is that nutmeg or hazelnut or something like that? I think that means. But yeah, she's beautiful. And I also have this one from the designer, so the Alice from Nimue. Um, I know Ampu Stitcher is actually stitching this one. It's beautiful and I absolutely love it. It's the, it's so much detail and just that little bit dark. It's, it's great and when the time comes I'm going to thoroughly enjoy stitching it. But yeah, that's another one of theirs. So they're the two that I have of the Nimue's. I'm trying to think of who the designer is on this. I don't know if it's written on there because is it Tralala? -la? So obviously there's this little one here which is really cute with the strawberries on. I really love that. I'm not sure if that is the designer or whether it's the Tralala -la collection. But that's lovely. And I like the way she's finished it too. Or he. And then you've got uh, the Blue de Chine. So these are actually all finished like cushions covers. And these are the heart. So what you're actually getting is the heart. So you've got this one's actually uh, viol violets. Um, now what I will say with these patterns, I can't turn it over because there's a little bit of pattern exposed. What I will say um, is that it's the pattern itself is actually printed, but uh, the instructions are handwritten. I haven't stitched these yet, but I've opened them up and I've looked through it through it, and I don't think it's going to be a problem. I can certainly understand how to um, how to tra like, not translate, but can certainly it certainly appears clear. So again, I wouldn't let. I'm just telling you, but I wouldn't let that put you off at all because I don't think it'll be a problem. So that's blue to sheen, so that's the violets. And this one, I believe, is an enemy. Yes. So that's the anemones. Very shabby chic, but really pretty. And I like their finishing style too. So last but certainly not least, I'm going to put one of these over here. 
suppose I may have to take them out of their packaging. Um, he's possibly one of my favourite continental designers um, that you probably already know. That would be Corre Abatacore, and they're an Italian designer. Now, what I will say with um, Corre Abatacore, their patterns are really, really easy to use. Their colour uh, coded so they don't use the symbol they use the color but it is very very clear um, I would highly recommend using them um, like trying them if you like their designs these are the ones I actually have as hard copies which I'll show you and some of these are just in Italian um, but they also do do conversions this designer you can definitely find on Etsy, as well as Madame uh, Chantilly as well. She's also on Etsy. And I'm sure that you could, I know for those um, uh, US um, and possibly Australia, where you may get um, quite a high charge for postage, I know some of them do provide it in PDF. And if you do find a design that you don't like, then I would recommend emailing them and speaking to them because I know a lot of people that, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to try and, if they can, they'll try and help you out. So um, I, I don't know if every single pattern I'm going to show you is available in PDF, but I do know that they're on Etsy. So go check them out. There might be something that you find that you, you like as well. So the first one, is hopefully going to be a new start for me this year, we'll see, is um, the Autumn Garden. So for those of you that have been watching my video for a long time, I've completed the Summer Garden, and uh, which was a Kuro Batakuro pattern, but this one's the Autumn Garden, and eventually um, I want to have all four seasons completed so that I can change them out every year. So I've, I've completed the Summer Garden. I started the Winter Garden last year, this is the autumn which I hope to start this year and the pictures don't do these justice. Um, but yeah, really beautiful. They're in these shiny little, and that's why I'm taking them out, because these do have a lot of glare. If I can get away with it, then I might be able to. So this one is the Winter Garden. Uh, you can see I started up here um, with where I'm at at the moment. If you watch my videos, I'm sort of in this section here. But this Winter Garden is really pretty. So this one's the spring, the spring garden. So I intend to stitch that on a, um, a vintage Zweigart vintage um, light green background, 32 count. I think that would look really lovely. So that's the spring. And then the last one that you've seen before, and I'll insert a picture is uh, the summer garden which is the one that I've completed and I stitched that on um, a vintage Zweigart vintage blue 32 count so yeah some other patterns of theirs that I have in hard copy is um, Obviously, Sweet Christmas. That's another one that I completed um, last year. I stitched that on a 32 count raw uh, Belfast uh, with a silver fleck running through. Again, another really pretty pattern. And just to make you aware, this is actually called Sweet Christmas, and obviously, therefore, it's written in English. But within this pattern, you have um, 
a French, an Italian and a German translation of Sweet Christmas. So there is a lot of versatility there. The next one is Pumpkin Farm. I just thought this was really cute. They do a strawberry farm and things like that, but I particularly liked this one. And the last one is that I have is um, I love my kitchen. And I love the colours on this one. Whether I'll actually keep those colours when the day that I come to stitch it or when I come to stitch it, I'm not sure. But I, d I must admit I'm loving the red and the white. It's, But you could equally do it in blue and white or whatever. Now, as, as you can see, um, the finishing style, they've actually put a piece of beautiful red um, white uh, mini polka dot with a little bit of lace. Now I actually did that back on um, my Creations Decorate Style piece um, and finished it like that. It's great if you want to um, use, if you've got a frame and you've got an odd size piece that you don't want to have a frame cut size for, then this is a really good way of keeping it all in um, without having to put a mount around it, um, of sort of keeping it all in a style and very in keeping with the shabby chic style so it was Madame Chantilly, Kure Batakure and a lot of other um, continental designers that I'd noticed were doing this sort of thing and that's where I got the idea from back in 2016 I think whenever I completed it um, to do that um, and to use a piece of fabric and it does work it really works well with the shabby chic and gives you a bit more freedom to maybe buy a normal size frame and be able to but still keep it looking like it, it was deliberately done like that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed um, this uh, video. Um, it gives you, hopefully I've introduced you to some maybe some new designers, some of the things that are available. Obviously check your um, local needle workshops no matter where you are they may they may know of these these designers and although they don't stock them they may be able to get um, the designs for you so you, you, we need to use them or lose them with the needle workshop so obviously that would be my first port of call definitely um, check out Etsy a lot of the designers particularly Kure Batakure um, uh, Madame Chantilly they're all on Etsy so I know you would be able to certainly buy patterns from there and in some cases I'm I'm pretty sure PDFs too so that could save you on postage and yeah I mean check check them out I think um these designers are really lovely they they are sometimes a particular style and that may not work for you but it certainly works for me I love a little bit of shabby chic so um yeah uh, I would highly recommend using them so take care guys thanks for watching uh, remember to give us a thumbs up and uh, I will speak to you soon bye <laughs>